Breakfast puppies? Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving Game Masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! Are you getting back to playing your violin at all or no? I am. Awesome. Because I know that was I a, can badly play Twinkle Twinkle. I know that was Star. a really big thing for you like about six months ago because you could not play it. And I've also it's it's really weird. Something about turning uh into your late thirties, early forties is that all the shit you fucked around with at an earlier time starts clicking. Like all the things that you're just been working on in the back of your mind mm-hmm. uh starts clicking. Like I haven't read music. Since I was 14. Okay. And I picked it up again in about a day. Nice. I haven't read violin sheet music since I was in like fifth grade. Yeah. It's, it's, it's honestly amazing how easily, if you let your subconscious work on something for 25 odd years, it'll figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> what about the music to this television show? Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's Do good. you think that you could teach yourself how to play some of it? Uh, yeah, easily. Now, is that a violin or like a fiddle? Uh, it's, it's a little the bit same of both. thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, th- this this could be done. I'm actually learning uh, the Last of the Mohican song. Ooh, is nice. what I'm teaching myself right uh, now. The Gale. Yeah, yeah. that's a, yeah. a really good choice. Yeah, that one. good. So speaking of television shows, we're talking about Firefly this time on Half Movies Will Game. And I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. Now, this is something that we have been talking about for a long time. Everyone's. If you're if you're listening to the show, odds are you know what Firefly is. Yeah, probably. By the way, there's spoilers. Lots of spoilers. It got canceled and there was a movie and people died in it, too. Yep. That would be Wash. <laughs> also, uh, <laughs> Pigo means baboon's ass crack. So my... <laughs> My my grade school, junior high, and high school, and into college best friend, okay, we were all into the show when it came out, and he saw an advanced screening of the movie, all right? So we're driving, and he, he, and he saw an advanced screen of it, and then we all got tickets to see it like two or three nights before it premiered in Phoenix. So a bunch of us were going to get, get together, and we went to go see it, and he was with us. And we're standing in line, and I shit you not, just like uh, uh, from uh, what the family guy, what, what the dad does with Empire Strikes Back, my best friend said, oh, yeah, and Wash dies in this movie. Oh. We're in uh, fucking line. To ha- and we're hanging out. And it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, I hate the fact that Wash dies. So, dear listener, uh, by the way, Wash dies in the movie, and other people do, too. Uh, I wasn't expecting to spoil the movie, but I guess nah. we've already gone there. So, we're going to do something new here. The movie came out in 2002. If it hasn't been seen yet... I think the movie came out later. 2002, the show came out in 2002. The movie was 2003. So, this, well, the show was 2002 when it started. But, anyway, the... Uh, this is this is one of those shows that we all know and love, and if if you don't, you at what rock have you been living under? Now we are a podcast about movies and games, but this is such a big part of geek culture. We deserve to yeah. at least take an episode on it. There are a handful of shows I think that we can say have cinematically Al- affected altered. Us. Yeah. Just, yeah, well, television has been. Be- Come more and more cinematic ever since Agreed. I think the I late nineties. You have things like um, you have things like Band of Brothers, Sherlock, just these these amazingly produced, well written, glorious stories. The, this isn't these aren't lifetime dramas. I mean these are <laughs> these are amazing works of art, and yeah. they they deserve to be at least touched upon. We're not changing our entire format. We still have movies, we'll game, but we will take a occasional foray into uh, the the smaller screen. Now, my first exposure to Firefly was, sadly, not when it was airing. I had never heard Neither. of it. No, I, mine was. Years later. Yeah, it was years later. It was mid-2000s. I remember Netflix was, I was still subscribed to Netflix, and we were doing, the, this was before they even did the streaming of everything, mm-hmm. so it was just the disc service, and I, you know, I rented the first disc of uh, firefly it's like oh what is this everybody's talking about it i think i saw it in a web comic someone was lamenting that no one had seen it and i was like well 
I haven't seen it, so let me see what this is all about. Get the disc, watch Serenity, mm -hmm. the first big episode, pop the disc out, put it in its sleeve, send it back that night, drive out to Fry's, buy the DVD box set, come home, <laughs> call in sick the next day at work, and, you, and, and you stay home it. and watch the whole goddamn thing. Incidentally, I have a list of a bunch of uh, swear words in Chinese in front of me, so I'll be shoving Excellent. those out with uh, explanations over the course of the episode. I remember watching it when it premiered on Fox, and it seemed very disjointed because nobody knew at the time that Fox was releasing the episodes out of order. They did the they wait did what? The, yeah, Fo so Fox and their Infinite Wisdom they did not like the two hour premiere of of Serenity that we. Oh oh oh! Hold on, I want to keep a running count here. Of okay. Ways in which Fox screwed this. Okay. So uh, that's one. I have a feeling you've got more. Uh, so well, I mean, F you Fox. <laughs> We got one. All, all right. right, that's one. So they first of all, they thought that the original pilot was way too dark. And that was the first thing. So and Josh Whedon said, No, I'm not changing it. You just have to fucking deal with I'm it. I'm gonna mark that as two. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> the second one was that they or they premiered it out of order. Be, being that the Serenity episode, the two part Serenity episode, was then put at the end of the series. Yeah. There's they canceled two it. episodes that I uh two two series of two. That can't go. It's uh, our Mrs. Reynolds, mm -hmm. our Mrs. Reynolds too. The the one with Mal's wife, Christina and, Hendricks. Yes, yeah. and um, and uh, the one with Niska, the the two with Niska, the train job and uh, the train job. They premiered as the as the first episode. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's honestly that's and not it, a bad call. But it seemed disjointed because they were they there was they were referencing things, and I understand. Going into you know a book or a movie, you do the in media res. You're starting right in the middle, and you will get information. But it seemed too much out of place. I agree. In media res is a great way to start a game, but with a show, especially with Firefly, where every episode begins shortly after the previous episode ended. Like this show has an extremely well connected continuity. Yeah. And it, they talk about, like, they spend, like, the first 10 minutes of any episode referencing events from the last one. Like, how did they get the yeah. cows, you wonder, in one yeah. episode? Or how did this, yeah, it's, uh, God. So you would say that Fox is a unjunji ching jai so, <laughs> which would be a filthy fornicator of livestock. Well, we just lost China. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, man. There we go. <laughs> hey, you know what? I guarantee that I pronounce that better than Dusty pronounces <laughs> any American actor I, you know what? I'll, I, yes, I agree. And a quick check in, listener, just to make sure that you're following along here. We are primarily going to focus on the Serenity, that main thing, when we talk about, you know, the things that we watch tonight. But we'll do some check ins on the moon, the show as a whole with Dusty's facts, bringing us into the production notes and things. If you want to hear us talk about some of the other episodes, we've got more coming bonus content on our Patreon channel. But for now, Yes. The other thing that Fox did to fuck this up was they put it on the Friday night death slot, which was like eight o'clock in the evening. Oh, that's three. On West Coast. So that meant East Coast, it was 11 o'clock at night. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. I want to quick check in. I would so have stayed up for it. Don't, don't the networks have like different broadcast times when it comes to something? Like if something in the East Coast is like prime time, mm -hmm. don't they have staggered release times? Not so no, much. No, no. Maybe Did, now, but then you know, early two thousands. I maybe they, was something like this. No, okay. Unless you were a cable channel like Sci Fi when they did Farscape, because Farscape was was staggered because they knew they had a, a worldwide audience. Yeah, okay. But Fox network. Yeah, Ugh. it was a network. Yeah. Fuck you, Fox. <laughs> In so many ways, Fox. Okay. They also. <laughs> Wanted the sh okay, so get this, get this <laughs> fucking paradox. They wanted the show to be less dark, but they wanted Mal to shoot more people. Yeah, but you can shoot people comically, not comically. They wanted to shoot bang dead. But what about shooting them politely? And they uh, <laughs> Fox also did not want to have uh, any reference of a companion. I think the the word whore is probably said in the show more than the word companion. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Chong Bao Ho Tsai. What's that? Monkey raping. What? That's been that said a lot in that. But yeah. but Joss Whedon initially the one of the storylines for for uh, Inara was that she was going to be a high you know the high end escort, and 
at some point she was going to inject herself with a serum that caused everyone to uh, abuse her, to die a horrible death, and then have her get kidnapped and then... Girl, you need pussy control. Pounced on by... She would be gang raped, basically. Wait, Reavers? Um, Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was that was the, that was the notes that she would be gang raped by with, with by Wait, Reavers. Josh or Fox? Josh initially wanted that. Josh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, man. <laughs> Apparently, that's that's some of the mining that I've done. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Josh Whedon here and how he is not the savior of geekdom that a lot of people try to remember him as. He is a pretty sexist fellow. His female characters actually aren't really that well written. And let's talk about the characters in Firefly. Inara, you meet her, she's getting fucked. River, you meet her, she's naked in a fridge. Mm -hmm. And Kaylee, you meet her and she's fine. But how does she meet the crew? Getting fucked. So, yeah. By the yeah. by the original uh mechanic, yeah. Yep. That's, Do any of the male characters have sex on screen? Uh, Simon didn't. Do any of the male characters have sex on screen? Uh Yes, uh, no. Wash on screen. Yeah, yeah Wash uh, did. Yeah, Wash, Wash, and, Wash and, and, Zoe. and Zoe. Yeah, yeah, but that's like, but it was warrior and, woman married, space and it was sex. it was more of of. <laughs> Have you like, ever had a warrior woman? <laughs> <laughs> and it was more of like the the collapsing we just finished. It's implied type of sex. It I'll allow it. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't like we're going at it. Well, but, maybe he just knows about the special hell. I mean, yeah. I'm just, <laughs> Maybe he's been there. I, I I will say that he's he's done a lot for geekdom. I'm not gonna just because well, he, he is not, he has he's not incredibly uh, up on what we now consider to be you know gender issues. Um, this was a long time before those were in the forefront, especially in that way. Mm -hmm. So I mean, once again, we we want to be careful about looking at something that was from the past in today's lens. Mm -hmm. I Otherwise, a that. lot of music and a lot of art and a lot of everything just goes away and it becomes, you know, a book burning. Yes. And I don't want that. It is. Right. It's not what would be produced now. No. But, you know, I I think I think Firefly would be still be produced today. There would be changes. I mean, obviously, I don't think I don't think there'd be a lot of changes. I, I think it would go someplace like. I think some some place like BBC would pick up something like this, or HBO would do something with it because Amazon picked up the Expanse, and I think the Expanse is as close to Firefly. I mean, we've all seen Westworld, right? That's recent. Yeah, I haven't seen just, Westworld. Oh, actually, Westworld is amazing. Yeah. I finally got to watch the whole first season. I need to watch the Bit second rapey. season. So it is. I want to say that the really Expanse, the Expanse. I have issues with the Expanse, but they're minimal. And if we ever get to it, I'll talk about it on there. But well, I will I say this: it lacks. The camp and the fun of Firefly. Firefly does yeah. have a lot of camp and fun to it. It has some of the best one-liners. The Just, best. I mean, one the, the writing is amazing. Just from this episode, like, uh, I just want you to, don't, you know, don't hurt him. I just want you to make him scared. Pain I'm is scary. I'm going to get myself an ear. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just going to cut on you a bit till you tell me what I want to know. <laughs> nothing plus nothing. Carry, Carry the, the nothing. nothing. <laughs> Still Nothing. <laughs> You know, what was it? Uh, the wheel keeps spinning. Back? What was it? That Wait. only matters to people on, on the, the rim. rim. Yeah. Oh, fucking Mark Shepard. Yeah. He is so good at that role. No other role. Just that one. He is just that smarmy yeah. bastard. What do you pay him for? Huh? What does he do on the ship? Mm. Public relations. <laughs> what he's talking about, Jane? She just wishes he was a gynecologist because... Uh, <laughs> I mean, when, uh, when Mal tells uh, Simon that Kaylee's dead... And he does his slow motion run. <laughs> and they're all laughing. I think one of my favorite quotes is something, Matthew, that I think you would probably use at your work all the time. What? Uh, Mal going talking to Jane. Jane, your mouth is talking. You might want to look, look to at that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually have used that. You know, it's very interesting, too, because at the very beginning, you see uh, Sergeant Mal mm -hmm. in Serenity Valley. Sergeant Mal is outgoing he's encouraging his troops he's he's leading by example he's happy he's not bitter at all he's like this is fun and we're shooting people we're making the best of this and we are so very pretty yeah mm -hmm. and i mean he's just doing this whole thing and then and then it, it cuts to the present and then you see the captain no longer sergeant mal but captain mal who is much more burdened by responsibility a lot more worldly wise but every now and then Playful Sergeant Mal will come out again, which I, I really like seeing that. That was a fun scene transition. 
because it was the noisy, loud, depressing chaos of space. To uh, the, no, no, no. Of war. I'm sorry, of war. Yeah, to the to quiet the of space. 100% quiet, no sound in space, silence. And well, that was something... if this show has taught me anything, it's that, you know, uh, stringed instruments are the sound that <laughs> spaceships make <laughs> when, when they're about to light off their drives. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. I don't remember what I was oh. going to say. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, the remember. silence of space I thought was a nice yeah. touch. The silence of space. I, I, I like that, that Whedon was very particular. Like, there is no sound in space. There's no sound of drives kicking in. There's no whoosh. Like but most they made up for show. that in color. They did, the yeah. The Firefly but, Drive oh. is one of the most beautiful yes. spaceship drives I've Let's ever seen. Let's them. Yeah. My, my cat, oddly enough, when he sits at the top of the stairs, he sits in the <laughs> same way <laughs> that looks like that fucking ship. Did anyone else think the Alliance carriers looked Warhammery? They look like skyscrapers. Yeah, I don't yeah. know too much about Warhammer. You know, I just picked up Warhammer. Okay, which uh, like 40, Warhammer? 40K Wait, who, eighth edition. The, 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 okay, the, the the books, like the reading books or the actual gaming books. Both. I had a little money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so one of one of my friends growing up, he was into to to what Warhammer forty k, and after like a year, he's like, now I know why they call it forty k. Like he looked like that's what you spent. ragged and like he was strung out and tired and sunken in. And I was, just, I was like, why? He's like, what you just said, uh, it's, uh, it's so expensive. Yeah. So what I hear you saying, Matthew, is that at some point we need to watch the prequel to Warhammer 40K, Event Horizon. <laughs> you know, honestly, I really, I really wish we had it for Aliens because I would have fought tooth and nail to get a war gaming on there. No. <laughs> yeah. God. But back to Firefly. Ooh, no, yeah. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> See yeah. the light bulb just getting yeah, brighter and horizon and uh-huh. That's where it all began. <laughs> Heard it here first. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't come up with that idea. It's a popular fan theory that Event Horizon, the events of that movie, mm-hmm. set that universe really? into I Warhammer 40. I, yeah. I've yeah. never I've never because heard that. that's how that's how they travel through space. space. Hulk. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, I yeah. don't know enough about the Warhammer universe, so I probably yeah. would never even come across They basically across punch it. holes through hell and then come back out and hope that they're sane when they get to their destination. Oh, wow. Chaos yeah. space, but yeah. The warp. But I... I, I never of like Reavers. Like the, the, yeah, the, the, the Alliance ships. They are, they're like skyscrapers in space. I never well, really like them. Well, those are cruisers, and if anyone knows anything about ship designations, cruisers are small. Mm-hmm. Cruisers are what you use to suck up a missile... That's going to hit a big, important ship. So I like that this huge monolithic city block is a cruiser, which gives you some idea of the power of the Alliance and also tells you something about the desperation that would drive the Browncoats to say, no, we're not going to do that. These ships, to me, looked like they could have been a a way for the the world creators of Firefly to establish how artificial gravity worked. But nope. They never did it. The Expanse does a good job of that, of having all ships be oriented vertically because the ship only has gravity when it is at thrust. And then when it gets halfway to its destination, it flips flips and then thrusts, you know, slows itself down slowly at 1G. Whereas Firefly. That's how we do it now. (laughs) Yeah. Firefly is one of those where we never see zero G except for outside of a ship. Yeah, because the magic field ends when you're not touching the yeah. hull. Yeah. Well, actually, you know. when you're touching, when you're not touching the inside of the hull, the outside of the hull, you need magnetized yeah. boots as they go into. Yeah. In the series. <laughs> yeah. It's a wagon train in space. Yeah. Do you notice? I didn't notice until I saw the derezzed kind of shitty. I don't know. It's it's got to be like 480 or, or whatever the old SD version is that you have on Plex. I noticed that they have. Uh, the brown coats in the Battle of Serenity Valley have chainmail under their brown coats. What? Yeah, they really? have fucking yeah, chainmail, yeah. and huh. they had red vests on too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, which was weird. I've got the HD version on Plex. That, that's that, about I, as HD as Firefly why gets. Am I, why yeah. am I seeing it so crappily? Because it wasn't really that. It well was 2002. Filled. That was, <laughs> I mean, you were gonna. You weren't. You we weren't my even DVD hitting 720 doesn't look like yet. that though. Yeah, we weren't even hitting 720 yet. Huh. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, uh, I, in 2002, I still had a 53-inch rear projector Pioneer <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> um, but Chainmail. Well, one thing that I thought was interesting is that uh, the end of the opening sequence, when they're watching the sh- ships Flashing come down, his face, yeah. and it comes back in, and it shows the flash of his face, so that one dude is still standing next to him. And, you know, it implies he gets shot. But the sound that you hear, as if his vest is shorting out, it's like a zap, zap. And then he, he falls down. All the 1911 um, chemical propelled weapons that they have are somehow energy weapons. I don't know what that's all about. Huh. Um, in, um, in war stories where they're gearing up, they're handing out 1911s. They're handing out Glocks. Yeah. They're handing yeah. out tiny little holdout pistols and a couple future pistols. Mm-hmm. Um, all of these chemical powered pistols. Um, make that same. Pswow, pswow, pswow. So I, I, I just think it was. I just think huh. it was a style, a stylistic choice that yeah. Whedon made. It wasn't anything like, "Hey, they have weapons from 500 years ago." I think it was just like, "Hey, we're going to copy this style from the 20th century." And just so I, uh, a vague gun nut, can go ahead and sleep at night and still love the show, I'm going to say that everyone in the verse has a chip in their head which is directly fed from the optic on every gun, which is, for some reason, held at the waist. Wow, it's so fucking Western. Yeah, it, it, it is, is a it's Western. A it, is Western. A, it is a <laughs> Fine, they didn't bang. have <laughs> scopes. They didn't need <laughs> scopes. I find it, I'm vastly, I'm very curious that that is the hill that you wish to die on. It's my not, hill is, I, my I, hill is, I made up an yeah, excuse yeah. to get around that hill. I found a trail. Yeah. My hill is gravity. I blazed a trail. Gravity in space, for some reason, always fucks with me. It, it's hard to do unless I, you know, unless I come up with the excuse of, they just have a hand wave drive. And the hand yes. wave drive is how they cover all that stuff space distance doesn't matter they never have g-forces they just have a hand wave drive there's a I, I forget the name of the of the book and the author and it's horrible of me but uh the 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 ship that he that his characters have in this book is a perfect square and one of there's a character in the book is like why do you need a square in space and the captain's like you realize there's no gravity there's nothing pushing against this ship we can have it whatever we want yeah guys like no yeah. aerodynamics necessary yeah. but it's a forget- firefly class specifically is made for landing that's why it has yeah. the yeah the jet on each side that's why it can do a crazy ivan Fuck. pretty much it was <laughs> pretty all, awesome. I, all i could think of uh was uh the hunt for red october yeah for some reason there con sonar crazy ivan <laughs> A, a maneuver so dangerous you have to literally rip cables out of your engine in order to do it <laughs> love jane's face there <laughs> All right, I'll walk you through it. It's real simple. And he opens this mess of wires and just <laughs> fucking, he's, he's my favorite Baldwin. Yeah, he is. You know, I've been watching him in The Last Ship, which is another really fun show. It is. I've heard um, it's really good. I've seen a couple episodes. It's, I, I like I, I, I like The Last Ship, uh, A, because it's got him, and B, because it has um, the military taking control after society crumbles, which mm. I think is a very likely scenario. And he is great in it, but there is a downside. It's about 10 years later than this, and he is a motherfucking bald as I am. I mean, like, his hairline just waved a little white flag and went in the full fucking retreat. <laughs> He's, so it was nice. He looks very young. He looks very healthy here. Can we can we talk real quick about one of my favorite characters in the entirety of the Firefly universe, and he's typically referred to as that one guy because he's in so many other shows that oh, people forget his name. Badger. Bester. Yes. Oh. Mark Shepard. Well, we were just talking about him earlier. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Badger's yeah. the shit, man. Yeah. yeah. Badger is amazing. I thought you were about to talk about Bester, the guy from... Uh... We catch up with yeah, Badger yeah. as he's checking a young <laughs> female courtesan's teeth. Okay, the teeth. <laughs> the teeth. Have, the, not just in that, but I've seen so many different shows, so many different movies, things where someone's being put into slavery, and it frequently might not even be sexual slavery. It's like, we're going to sit into the mines, check their teeth. Why do they check the fucking teeth? Always. I because, can get it for being a courtesan, Um, everything the, else. The, because it's a weird thing that bad teeth are actually debilitating. You can't eat. And let's say that person is in some sort of slavery. That means you have a non-functioning slave, which means it's just one of the things a slave buyer would check. 
Okay. I always, honestly. If you can't eat, you can't work. It's I that simple. I always honestly thought it was because, um, you know, because some cultures. It's because he's British. <laughs> he wants to steal their teeth. like gold or silver. And no. it was just like, we're okay, you, you, you've got, you know, that I've in read there, some of the sick shit in history. It, that no, was I know you have. Thing. Honestly, though, Dusty, I didn't think about that. That at least kind of makes sense from a logistical standpoint, too. Like capturing somebody, they're enslaved. Hey, let's take that gold filling. Or the, but then we yeah. can't feed them because now they have bad teeth. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one thing Joss does that's <clears throat> really good is uh, is he, he'll build up a big moment and then make it funny. Like uh, like the river reveal mm-hmm. where he's struggling. No, stay away from my case and kicks it open. And then he stands there and there's steam coming out and he's looking down and he goes, huh. huh. <laughs> Some have oh, uh, was this for you? <laughs> some have blamed him of plagiarism because that is the exact form of introduction of a character from an anime called Outlaw Star, which is essentially Firefly, which predates Firefly, which he claims to have never seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? I don't I don't give a shit. Psychic badass found smuggled naked in a refrigerator chamber. And, yeah. I, I I don't care. Um all art um it's and all and copied. all writing to a certain degree, is a matter of filing off the serial numbers and moving it across state lines. Oh, I don't care either. Uh, yeah. I, I like both stories. They're great. Yeah. But uh, I think the fact that he says he's never seen it is a little circumspect because some people online have lined up it. both scenes and you're like, seriously, dude? Well, we, we talked a lot about that with, with yeah. The Fifth Element, with, with Luke Basson stealing borrowing from the comic book series that, that you talked about that I don't remember the name of right now. Uh, he basically took scene from scene, scene for scene for the fifth element. Mm-hmm. Well, I, th- I think that might've been Valerian and Laureline. Yes. I've, I've been alive long, long enough that yeah. I've had a couple of ideas in my head that I've never yeah. told anyone about. And then they come out like two weeks later. Shit happens, man. Mm-hmm. You know, they just happen. Yeah. It, it's kind of like know, you know, the music's like, oh, you're not going to use this? Okay, I'll give it to somebody else who can push it through. Thousand monkeys, thousand typewriters, thousand years. This shit happens. That said, babbling's weirdo, psychic, magical girl <laughs> naked in a fridge in the cargo hold of a spaceship is kind of specific. I think. Yep. Anyway. All right. It was a good scene, but. Eh. I really like it when Mal runs out of patience. Yeah. Yeah, so I I think one of my one of my favorite instances of him is uh, in the episode Shindig, yeah, where he's fi- at the end he's fighting and the guy you know he's he's bested the guy and he, so he says you well, know I'm okay yeah and he yeah. and he stabs him he's like well nobody said I was respectable and stabs him again yeah so <laughs> and one more yeah I also really yeah. like when Wash is concentrating and he just he goes to this really weird place that I think he did a great job yeah. with acting where he's like I don't want to alarm anyone. <laughs> but I think we're being followed. <laughs> I have the comics for this. The comics are good. Did yeah. they continue? Are they pretty well? Yeah. Well well written. And you get into some of what was going on with book. Yeah. And that's yeah. really important. And I'm just, I'm really glad that someone took it upon themselves to tidy up the universe. Because at the end of this series, you're really invested. Because it's, it's really are. well done. There is a series that connects the show to the movie. Mm-hmm. And it involves, uh, what's his name? Lawrence, who got to, yeah. <laughs> he was a piece of shit, mm-hmm. too. He was really good at being sympathetic when he talked. He had that speech like he was your dad telling you to, yeah. to stop misbehaving. And then he would just fucking shoot you. It's like, yeah, I'm going to shoot you again. Don't move. I'm like, he was he was a great yeah. piece of shit. He deserved what he got. And that was the smoothest takedown ever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, bam, dead. Well, Mal, <laughs> let's let's make it game for a second. Mal has max stats and a couple of things. Oh, Sharpshooting. Definitely. Leadership, I would say, is one. Mal can't lie worth a shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's, his- that, there's that scene where he's making up uh, the story about why they have to go to Whitefall to deliver the medicines. And he's Everyone's- not selling it. Everyone's like... Okay, whatever you say, man. <laughs> and he's got he's got a really high charisma role, but like he just he, can't he has lie. no wisdom. He yeah, can't, yeah, he just can't. Well, if we're going by a certain game, which we'll talk about in a bit, his highest two things are leadership and pistols. Yeah. Okay. Yep. No, very very much. <laughs> just, he's so so bad at it. That that was a low roll 
on a skill he didn't even have. So, yeah. What about those Reavers? The fact that in the first scene, the first uh, episode. Got to have space orcs. You but we always have th- to have space fucking space orcs, I... but we never see them. I have a they are simply with uh, the uh, they are simply a, a threat in space, and it's a ship. We never even see what the ship can do, it, except that it has spikes and it's menacing, and everyone's afraid. You of get it. into some of it later. I know, but yeah. but, but they and, establish and in the movie especially. The movie kind of spoiled it for me because I liked how they said it in the show better than the movie. Yeah, but, because yep. the show is they were people who were driven mad by the vast emptiness of space. Yeah. And I like that. I did too. Mm-hmm. And the movie kind of like hand waved. It, it was, to us. yeah, yeah. It and was a drag, an experimental from a drag, fucking weird planet that had some drugs gone bad, and they just started murder raping each other and Ugh. wearing skin yeah. in that yeah. order. Yeah, if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say um, that Mal and Jane at the end of the episode talking about the money not being good enough. That was a nice foreshadowing to that, something coming. Well, not yeah. not only that, but that was a straight party moment where two people with opposing alignments were trying to make it work in the party that was chaotic good talking to chaotic neutral also i think that's one of jane's smoothest moments oh yeah Mm -hmm. just that look i agree well that says i'll be in my bulk (laughs) that was funny but that look is like well that'll be a day yeah Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. just that look and it's not like a stupid jane moment it's not a badass jane he was honest everyone has their element yeah jane is muscle that that's what he's for, mm-hmm. um, and mus- muscle has deep seated interests in how muscle gets paid. If you want to keep the muscle, you have to retain the muscle with the monies. Well, Th- that that's very much a part of him, and I don't like in another episode where they took that away from him. It was uh, Ariel. Was it the one uh, where he betrayed the group? No, 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 no. It was uh, oh, where he almost got spaced. Yeah. Yeah. No. Fuck, I had it and then you took me to Ariel. Um yeah, there there was there was a scene where he didn't care about the money anymore and I didn't like that. Hmm. Because we'll talk about that, 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 that was that was something that was that that's central to his character. Yeah. You made made the comment about, you know, cuz you know the 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 strength or his character wants the monies and it's very apparent when you know when they when they show him getting introduced you know he's with his gang, and Zoe's oh, like, "We'll it give is. you that. That's the okay, scene that okay. I'm talking we'll, about. We'll yeah. give you what, however much more, and your own bedroom." He's like, "Oh, I want to share my bedroom with with, 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 with him. With that one, that guy." And <laughs> yeah. bang, he just fucking shoots him in the leg, and then yeah. walks over to the other side. I'm like, "That is awesome." No, yeah. no, no. That's that's actually the scene I had the problem with because okay. he got paid. Mm-hmm. Now he could look to step up, and he did, but I don't see. I know, like, I, I work with bouncers. I know a lot of bouncers. Yeah, I know you do. I, I just don't see that kind of thing happening. Um, well, 500 years in the future. Yeah, on the rim. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> I, I, I can see that, too. It's just, that was a moment where I was like, uh, I, I think I think that if we were I, I, in, I would see him more just putting his gun away and stepping away. I, I think if we were in more of a society where there were, like, stun guns like that, that everybody could just openly carry... I I think that that would be something that would happen more often. Like, oh, you pissed me off, or this is a better deal. Oh, like, I'm going to shoot you in the leg. So we're going to get to that episode in a bit, actually. So let's let's table this and All bring right. it back up soon. But I now that we're talking about the characters, I do have a question for both of you. Okay. Uh, well, and Dusty, you might have already answered this, but the question is, who is your favorite of the of the main characters, or even the who is your favorite character in Firefly? Ooh, I'm you go first, Matthew. I don't have a favorite. I have two favorites. I have one favorite. It's tough. It would have been two, but honestly, and this has nothing to do with Adam Baldwin as being a piece of shit. I fucking love Jane. Jane is a great character. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's actually three. I'd say, uh, but no, no, it's 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 all of them. No, there's not a character here I, I don't like almost equally. Mine is Book. No. I, for some reason, I love. Here's okay. Here's I the thing about here's the people. thing about RPGs is that uh, I have this statement that I make uh, as a quote from an old friend of mine in my gaming group. It's one of my favorite quotes, and I use it in every new game I run. Your character's mysterious background only matters if anyone gives a shit. And so many people will come to a table with like a character with like an eight page background with full of mysteries. And then they want to play that solo guy. It doesn't do anything and talk. And then they get mad because no one ever thinks about their mystery because nobody cares, cares because you yeah. didn't tell them in the beginning. If the 
background is just hinted at enough, then it's a mysterious background. And books, constant, just subtle references to him being a straight up fucking badass. Yeah. And being part of the alliance. I'm just saying the Vatican has yeah. an army. Well, well you know. there, there was that. There was the scene. Well, hold on, hold on. Okay. Matthew, you've read the comics. Yeah. So then you know books' background. So it's way more complicated than that. Yeah. Like he is. Don't want to give anything away because we'll spoil the movie and the show, but you should read the comics. Also, right? I'm not going to talk about yeah. the comic books because I think you should go out and buy them and help support this universe because yeah. it's I agree. in the comic books. Yeah. It's still ongoing. They're but, still writing them. Yeah. The so, book is my favorite. I love Ron Glass. I think he's a fantastic the actor. Late Ron Glass. Yeah, the, that one is late. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, like Charlie Sheen. Yeah. Yeah. Dusty? There's there's that there's a pivotal scene where where the group's going to be, I, I think if I remember correctly, they're gonna be boarded by the Alliance. And Book just kind of yeah. gets on the intercom, is like, no, you're not going to board us, you're not gonna take the ship. And there's that hint that he was part of the Alliance, because even Mao was like, Someday you're gonna have to tell me how you know the Alliance so well. And he's just like no, I won't. And I loved it. And I and I don't know the comic. Well, that enough. particular line is from the movie. Oh, I thought that was yeah. in the TV. I thought no, that was in the well, series. The, the saving, they're, they're, the saving with the ident card happened in the show. Yeah. But in the movie, they at one point they meet up and they're on Book's planet, and he's got his hair yeah, out. Yeah, no, no. I th stuff. But I think they did it twice. I think <laughs> they did it in the series hair. also. Well, I, in the I, in the in the movie, Miles specifically is like, one day you're going to have to tell me what's happening. And all of us in the theater who came in to the theater to get that level of closure mm -hmm. to hear the story of book when, oh when, man <laughs> when he just goes no i'm not we're like what you but oh, god fuck you joss <laughs> who is your favorite there, to, Dusty? um I, I i have two characters uh That's fine malcolm reynolds and, and i just because I, I i he's han solo i mean that's basically who he is he's han solo in the wild west and i like that and i i kaylee I, I I like the mechanic. I, I I like the one that puts everything back together. I love Kaylee. She's she's my favorite of the women, at least. No, we have, all, the, all the characters it's, are yeah, good. All the characters, it's an yeah. ensemble cast. It, it is. It, is, it was initially it was supposed yeah. to only be five people in that in that group. I'm actually really glad that it's an overcrowded little ship because it's like you know that time a lot when you're telling your friends, "Hey, I'm going to start a D and D game," mm -hmm. and then you got like, "Yeah, you got four players," and then all your other friends call and say, "Hey, man, I want to play too," but you're too much of a wuss to say no. Yeah. I got too many players. That's I think how Firefly started. Well, <laughs> Joss Whedon had said that the more that they got into the development of the first couple episodes, the more that he found out he was going to have to have a bigger cast. I had heard that this was based on an RPG that he ran. No, I, I don't know if that's I didn't a fact. see that. I didn't. I didn't mind any of I that. I could see this being Traveler. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a Traveler game. And uh, initially, Doogie Hauser was supposed to play Simon. Oh, that would have been great. Neil Patrick Himmler. Yep. Neil Patrick Himmler. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God damn it. He was supposed to play. The guy uh, who played Simon was really good. Yeah. And that whole sinister act that he's putting on in that first episode, it's kind of you're like, this guy's up to no good. This guy's a piece of shit. I, I identify more most with Wash. I'm muscular-ish. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I get into and get myself out of a lot of trouble by using my mouth. Alan Tudyk um, is a fantastic actor. Oh, he is. Yeah. Do you all think that Serenity, again, the episode not the movie, yeah. serves as a good foundation for what could potentially become a multi-season story. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, Whedon yeah. wanted, Whedon initially, the timeline for this entire series was seven seasons. Wow. Thinking big there, Jeff. He did Angel. <laughs> he had Angel set as five seasons, no more, no less. Yeah. They gave it to him. Buffy, I think, was initially set to be five seasons, but it, it went on for, what, another two seasons? And then, and then this comics, a bunch of comics yeah. after it. Firefly was supposed to be beginning to end. This is the entire story, seven seasons. This did everything that I expect from a pilot. It introduced yeah. all the characters, all their strengths and weaknesses, their personality quirks, what they do, where their place is in the show. And why they like each other. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, and it went yeah. into their relationship. Um, no, it was, it was a very good first episode. Yeah, imagine if you saw... See bushwhack, not bushwhacked. Um, train job first. Yeah, you might not understand who Simon and River are, why they're there, and why anybody is putting up with them. I, I, I could deal with the yeah. inference, though. I mean, maybe maybe if you were dumb. I mean, yeah. I, I I could understand why some people would be confused, but those people probably have trouble fixing a sink. Mm -hmm. 
and yeah. they just buy <laughs> they just buy a new thing when something breaks. I, I understand that there are people out there who get confused, but I mean, this is a very simple show. It's it's a spaghetti western in space. If you can't follow along, well, I mean, someone's got to pump the gas, and that's okay, and you matter. But seriously, artificial gravity, how does it work? Magnets. <laughs> Magnets. <laughs> we should get ICP on to explain Firefly gravity. ICP, no, if you're listening and you want to come on board. And no, have that no, wait, wait, wait. Which ICP? Insane Clown Posse? Fuck no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I argue they had some good albums. But anyway, Dusty, uh, do you get anything else for us? Do we have any more notes before we move on? Wait, wait, to wait, the wait, 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 wait. You can't separate the artist from the art, but you think ICP had some good albums? <laughs> No, no, no. What? what, what? How do you Box. justify that? Little Box is a fantastic album. Well produced. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's a difference between being stupid and being uh, a piece of shit. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Juggalos are kind of weird. We just lost the Juggalos, guys. I don't uh, care. <laughs> Dusty, do you have anything else for us? No. Jump off a fucking bridge. No, I don't. Uh, all right. Let's take this to the gaming table. <laughs> Hi, this is Matthew. Thanks for listening. We wanted to take a moment to talk to you about uh, one of our sponsors, Guardian Games. Guardian Games has been with us since the very beginning of this show. Guardian Games is Portland's premier game store. They have magic miniatures, shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of RPGs, all the gaming swag, anything you could possibly want for your gaming experience. If you're ever in Portland and looking for a gaming store, Guardian Games is the biggest, most diverse store in Portland. You definitely owe it to yourself to go to Guardian Games. Well, leading us back into our gaming talk here, we are talking once again the Firefly television show, or a slightly condensed version of it. And you've got a stack of books. <laughs> I get a stack of books Jesus. here, but uh, Dusty, I even brought one. I see one of my favorite books in there. Well, we'll we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. So, Dusty, uh, tell us a little about these characters. You put the uh, yeah, I, put it in, yeah. I got it. <laughs> First, okay. we have Malcolm Reynolds, the captain of the Firefly class yeah, transport yeah. Played ship, played by Nathan Fillion. Played by Nathan Fillion, and Nathan Fillion is somebody you would recognize from a variety of other Joss Whedon things and that television show Castle. Mm -hmm. He's also in The Rookie, which is actually really good. The rookie's really good. It. Yeah, and he did. the premise seemed real weird. It's another cop show, yeah. but it's good. Okay, it's basically it's, his character it's... from Castle play like if it. it, it, it no, well, no, no, the cop, it's that he, it's, the cop that he writes about. It's Nathan Fillion, yeah. Fillioning about Fillion and and and. Oh, what was the the slug movie that he did? Phil Slither, Slither. Yes, Phil that Phil fucking and movie and was great. Oh, I love it. Honestly, so, his best role ever what? of all time was in uh, Doctor Horrible's Sing Along Blog. Oh, yeah, he was pretty good in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that that was his that was his swan song. Uh, I'm going with chaotic good for him. He's not lawful. Yeah, yeah, I would say chaotic good. He's he's, he's definitely a Robin Hood. I think type. most yeah. everybody in this yeah. is going to be good, uh, with uh, one uh, notable uh, exception. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. So the next character, Zoe, played by Gina Gina Torres. Torres. Yeah, yes, I, I don't I don't have my notes in front of me now. She is actually married to um, Lawrence Fishburne. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. she was also in a very short-lived, campy sci-fi action show called Cleopatra Twenty Five Twenty Five. That ended, oh, no and shit, she right. came into this the, this show right after that ended. Yes, which was on a back-to-back -back hour with Bruce Campbell's show, Master mm -hmm. of Disguise. I think it was. And I, you know, yeah. I will say this: if you take a chance on a weird, oddball show, if, if it's sci-fi or fantasy, you you may be able to do cons for the rest of your life yeah <laughs> um so you should always take that risk if you're in a uh, you'll have something to do yeah yeah and, and like get you, paid, you'll uh, never go broke get paid 125 dollars per photo yeah and... you'll you'll never go broke what would you put her alignment as oh she's lawful good lawful good Very i would agree so. yeah. yeah her yeah i'd yeah. have to agree with that one also honestly i i can go ahead and say the rest of them with one exception are lawful good uh, yeah, okay well we, we can go through them but okay no, well next we have the ambassador in nara played by marina baccarin yep um and something else that i know that she was in uh, she was i think on the first deadpool movie mm -hmm. and she's uh -huh. in both of them she was also in uh, v Star she was also in stargate farscape yeah, yeah. <laughs> starscape atlantis <laughs> or whatever 
Yeah, a lot of a lot of the sci-fi no. actors got brought into the Stargate. Yeah, well, at the universe. at the end of yeah. of Stargate's run, after uh, MacGyver had left and and uh, Sam Carter left, the character Sam Carter, yes. uh, they brought in Ben Browder, Ben Browder, and her. I think to, Claudia Black, and Claudia too. Black yeah. also. So yeah. it was basically Fargate, yeah. Stargate. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I would say that lawful she's good lawful as well. good. Yeah. yeah, lawful good. She's also been in The Flash, a series of unfortunate events. She's been in a number yeah. of movies. So who's next? Jane. Stop. Okay. Let's do Jane. No, well, no. Kaylee. Let's do Kaylee. Jewel State. Uh, an adorable, adorable character. Honestly, just lawful awesome. Yeah. I mean, just <laughs> awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, lawful good. Lawful good. Yeah. I can go with it. Yep. yep. Same thing. She's And she's currently in uh, The Magician's. That show is so I've good. Heard it's good. I'd say just good, good. I don't yeah. know. That she's especially lawful. so neutral, good. Yeah, she's neutral. Good. That's a allow rare one to, for us. It's neutral, good, especially yeah. for me too. Yeah. Uh, allow me to change that. I'm going to go ahead and write that down because yep. I keep my show notes. And I'm out <laughs> to know these things. She did a couple episodes of Supernatural. Yep. Uh, yep. Warehouse 13. Uh-huh. Uh, Stargate Atlantis. She was in for for a while. So yeah, she's been in a lot of other yep. sci-fi shows. Uh, next would be Jane. The, one of the Baldwins. Uh, chaotic neutral. Allie, uh, 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 Adam Baldwin. Yes, chaotic Adam neutral. Baldwin. Chaotic neutral. I know yeah. I made this whole thing about him having a code, but his code doesn't reflect the code of his society. So, Well, he's... I can't think of a better alignment for yeah. Jane, personally. I have no arguments. Even under reason, I yeah. thought about yeah. lawful neutral uh, because he's like, I didn't fight in no war. Best of luck to y'all, though. That, that struck me as a very lawful neutral moment. Yeah. But and overall, eh, like he's he's fucking rude to Kaylee. He's, he's <laughs> yeah. just he's a shit bird. And what are shit birds? Chaotic. At the table, they are always playing chaotic, chaotic neutral. neutral characters. Yeah. So chaotic shit bird. All right, book lawful good, lawful good. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. the, uh, Simon Ron, Ron Glass, who's uh, he uh, was uh, uh, Barney Miller. Barney uh, Miller. Uh, yep. yep. Let's remember him as a kid, seeing him in there. Now, what about Simon? Who played him? That is Sean Mayer. What else has he been in? Sean Mayer has also been in. Uh, he, he's he's played Teen Titans. He plays Nightwing. Uh, so he does some voices. He's done some voices uh, for Batman Justice League. Uh, he's okay. mostly done just a lot of TV. He's been in. He's been in Arrow. Uh, he did. He was in Much Ado About Nothing. Um, Warehouse Thirteen, The Mentalist. Yeah, mostly TV stuff. Okay. Who's next? River. River. Summer Glow. I have two. Uh, River. The sister and crazy weapon river. No, they're Shoot. two different people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's lawful good and chaotic neutral. I, I, would, I would agree with that one hundred percent. And Summer Glau was in the Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles, and uh, huh? she was in uh, Knights of Bad Astum. Knights of Bad Astum. Yeah, I think the only one we missed was Wash. Ah, Wash. That's right. I forgot him. Yeah, Wash. Did we get Zoe? Lawful good. Yeah, we did but, Zoe. Yeah, okay. yeah. She was also in Dollhouse. That's right. She mm-hmm. was. Yeah. Uh, the 4400, The Unit, uh, another couple of really good shows. <laughs> so what about uh, Wash, Alan Tudyk? I know he was in Dollhouse. He's also lawful, lawful good. good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's, 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 he's just he's silly, he's but good. I mean, uh, Alan Tudyk. I always pronounce it Tudyk. Is that is it Tudyk? I've always just said Tudyk. Okay, yeah, it's two dicks. Uh, two dicks. Okay. Ah, yeah. Uh, he has been. There's a. Uh, a, a, an That's Americanized a an, an Americanized movie uh, uh called uh uh f- no. That one, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in. F- no, was like, that was. I wanted to say four yeah. weddings and a funeral, but that's not it. <laughs> that that is not it at all. Uh, but it does have to deal with uh um a funeral, and he's hilarious. And if you ever get a chance to see it, get. Uh, I'm trying to find it right now. You're losing me. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. All right, let's move on. But he's been, want- he's been he's been in a lot of other. He's 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 a a, a big voice actor. Yep. If you've never listened to him, he's been in a lot of of movies. He's been in a lot of TV shows. He is just a a great. He's actor. a really good character actor. Yes. And uh, this is an interesting note here: is that most of these characters we've decided are lawful good, and so many people see lawful good as the boring alignment. I but, I play lawful good whenever I can. I love lawful. I, good. I like playing yeah. a lawful alignment. Yeah. I don't like playing chaotic. And I'd I make think a shit. Robin this Hood. is a good example of a of a whole group that's lawful good still getting into trouble and having a good time at the gaming table. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to be a fucking and Boy Scout to be lawful yeah. good. You just don't have to be a shitbird. 
There has been so much fiction for Firefly. Fan fiction, comics, a movie, lots of stories. Lots of role-playing games. I think there's like a mud online based on it. Like Firefly is one of those... (sighs) one of those lamented much beloved shows that has entered into hard core fandom you find firefly filking groups the the brown coats are a fucking society like Mm -hmm. it it is huge if you need inspiration for a firefly game honestly join one of those cults and they'll probably let you in firefly is a where are we going next we're on a wagon train to the stars like yeah we don't really have much to say here right matthew Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's watch any Western. Watch Pretty a Western. Much, yeah. yeah, yeah. Watch a Western and just put it on a starship. And there you have uh, your next Firefly adventure. But I do want to talk first about when I went online and got some people to suggest to me, uh, as I usually do, various Firefly candidates for playing at a role playing game table. And uh, I went on Twitter and I went on Should a few we mention other. mentioned the obvious ones first? communities so first i'm going to read what people have suggested okay. uh emily vittori uh, she said the first system that popped into her head was space 1889 i can see that that's a good system i forgot about that that's one a, yeah. I, I found out about it through a friend of mine uh nine or ten years ago he had the original pressing of i saw of, that on the of, back of comic books yeah. growing up yeah. and it's a it is a it's it's it has its flaws uh, the redo of it is really good but the original it, it is a good system i've never played it i yeah, don't know anything steampunk about it in space okay yeah yeah, yeah this is, you can kind of reskin it's, steampunk it's, to fit um, some of the weird hand wave drives that British they have in imperialism yeah. and colonialism in space gotcha yeah. okay yeah yeah that sounds like it would also work for something like a sword and planet kind of story like mm-hmm. uh, a John Carter. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Marcus uh, Burgraff recommends scum and villainy. And <laughs> yeah, he, he that's has, come I up a couple that. times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he is not the only one to recommend this. Marcus recommended this. Uh, my buddy Gary Madu Games on Twitter recommended it as well. Uh, and another guy named Dave Aldridge on Twitter. Thanks for leaving your comments, folks. Uh, Gary specifically says, uh, Scum and Villainy acknowledged the setting by default is a bit Star Wars-y, but pff, flappy hands. That's just color. The mechanics mm-hmm. explicitly support episodic spaceship crew hijinks of dubious legality. Fair warning, it's a Blades in the Dark hack, which, acknowledged, is not everyone's cup of blue milk. Uh, I like the reference. It was a good reference. A buddy named Aaron Griffin recommends Parsec. Now, Parsec is one I looked at a little bit, possibly for a game that I'm running on the side. Uh, He he says it feels a little bit like a light burning wheel. Characters are built uh, describing their birth education, career, and things like that to build up their skills and attributes. And if any of you played Traveler, it's kind of the same thing. You have this life path thing going on. And, well, with Traveler, you can die during character creation. I don't think you can in Parsec. I'm surprised nobody mentioned Traveler. Uh, Traveler is on my list of things to discuss, but uh, now that we've already said it, hey, Traveler is something you can do. <laughs> there we right. go. Uh, so Aaron also continues to say, system-wise, uh, Parsec is a dice pool game with the concept of a partial success which works well for pulpy action because rarely do firefly folks fail outright yeah yeah it has rules for relationships built in and these are added as you build your character they are an important part of the drama in a show like firefly these people show up and upset the balance driving people to help out or not i will say this if i ever played a firefly game wash is alive oh yeah yeah if i were to play a game if taking these characters and just pick that up yeah. as our characters and play them as a story i would just kind of forget the movie me too you, yeah. you can go that route see my my biggest problem with playing games if you if you pick up the the, the gaming system like firefly and you decide you want to play those characters you ne- you never you never add anything you're trying you're always trying to play that character that you've watched in the episodes and, and there's enough characters here though that you can have a party there's usually yeah. not when we do something like this. Yeah, my my first foray into something like this was was with old D and D Dragonlance, where we played the heroes from the Lance, and everyone tried to play Raceland as Raceland and Sturm as Sturm and Caramon as Caramon, and it didn't last long because 
it's difficult to play those characters as they're written, I think. Yeah. No, no, no. That's because they're kender in the world. Yeah. That, is, that is why that just fucking this kender. Is, this is true. This is this is true. And finally, uh, a few other people, uh, my buddy Chris Groff and Brian Ashford both recommend either the Genesis game or the uh, the predecessor to that, which is Edge of the Empire. Both of these are fantasy mm. fight games. They have a special cool dice mechanic where you don't use regular dice. No. You use their special custom dice that have like symbols and you roll yes. them to more divine the narrative outcome than the did i succeed or win outcome yeah so uh west end game star wars used d6 and then uh it went to d20 but fantasy flight and is fantasy the one that flight picked up the, star wars yep. here a few years ago and they changed the entire dice pool it's d10s shaped d10s it's, it's d6s it's, d8s d10s and i think some d12s yes yeah. um and they have little symbols on them that, that like you just said, it, it pushes the narrative. It's not yeah. anything more than that. And it, it is a great system. Yeah. I really like it. So yeah, the Star Wars win from Fantasy Fight is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I like it. They have multiple flavors of it. But Fantasy Fight in the last year or so released a game called Genesis, which is their setting neutral version of that game mechanic. Okay. So the dice are compatible with the Star Wars system if you want to play but it that way. But it's not the Star Wars universe. But it, it can be. It's, I mean, it if can. You want. But it's, it doesn't have a default setting. It's more of a open into system. That. I'll show you when we're done. I've got it on my yeah, shelf. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so anyway, that was uh, the majority of the people that were suggesting things to us online. Thanks again. And if you have suggestions yourselves, listeners, please send them our way. Yeah, I really enjoy when people interact with us. Well, let's talk about the basic themes of what's going to make a Firefly game. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, Fire Gun Escape. Slinging. Yeah, Farscape, I was just going to say gunslinging, Farscape, thieving. Lex, Star Wars, Star Trek, and Firefly, they're all very different. They have a lot in common, and they're all on spaceships, but Firefly has like a, that special feeling. Thieving, loose yeah. rules, mm -hmm. uh, on the fly. Constantly scraping by. Yeah. yeah. Always. It actually shares that whole one job, one more job aspect it shares with uh, Cowboy Bebop. Very much. You've yeah. watched that because they're constantly scraping by. Yeah. And at least in Cowboy Bebop, they always fucking fail. <laughs> yeah. At least in Firefly, they always kind of win some. Like they some. fail so much they can't eat. Yeah. <laughs> in Firefly, it's just barely by the skin of their teeth. Well, Mal's better than Jet. Oh, well, this is true. <laughs> well, yeah. I think Zoe is better than Jet. Mal is better than Spike. <laughs> and Kaylee is better than Ed. There, I said it. That said, it doesn't have a dog. And if you want to send your hate mail, I... please go to Nathaniel <laughs> at HaveMoviesWillGame.com. I did some great cosplay as Jet. Yes, you did. You did. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. There's and very few things for a bald man to do. This, this, uh, you know, uh, tell yeah. me about it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot that are specialty bald guys with goatees. Yeah. Yeah. We're interesting yep. beards. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But the wagon train to the stars, like again, it's a space western. So yeah. if, if it's a theme that's going to fit in something like Gunsmoke or Bonanza, then it's probably going to fit in Firefly. You, you can take it, it's the yeah. same thing. There is a shipment coming in that the town needs. Somebody's poison the water in the, the, Yeah, there there is a, a vital supply that the town needs. You're you're marginally the heroes. Firefly to me also is it's fucking Scooby Doo in space almost. Less mystery and more crime, because Scooby Doo is always uh, I I can't see it. I don't see no? it. Okay. No, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm with. Uh, okay, on this. sorry, you're wrong. That's no, Damn, that's I, fine. I, I know good systems for a Scooby Doo game. But, oh, I'm sure there's many, but, yeah, but it's just Firefly doesn't have the investigation aspect of it. Like in, in every okay. Firefly adventure has a sort of a structure to it. It's the get the job, start the job. Something goes wrong. Scrape by by the skin of your teeth. Move on to the next. Kick episode. the guy into the engine. Say something yeah. pithy and move on. <laughs> yeah. All right. And of course, one that we can't forget about is the small guy versus the big government. You're like, the underdog, definitely. The un well, yeah. The big government is always or, trying to fuck you over. I, I would go so far as yeah. to say the outlaw. You're not necessarily bad, but you are the outlaw. And even if you aren't bad at all, th they don't care. Like very at the beginning, they just see, oh, it's a firefly, probably a, probably an illegal salvage operation. Let's get them. The government in Firefly, they if you've don't ever care. driven in L.A. Yeah. in a '89 Tercel, you know exactly <laughs> what they mean. Right yeah. there. <laughs> Constantly trying to avoid the man, kind of similar to <clears throat> Smokey and the Bandit, right? And of course, the chain of command. 
you know. Well, what do we got in this stack here? <laughs> yeah, this is a big, this is a good size stack. Well, I brought a few games that I do want to talk about. A few here. is three. Um, and yeah, <laughs> anything more than that is several. <laughs> we cannot talk about Wagon Train to the Stars without talking about Star Wars. The West End game you see, V6 version. I, I don't see it. It's not. It has none of the feel. You could do it. You you can do it. it I mean, it, it, you, it, 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 they're stars. Well, you you'd have to you have to strip away everything that is Star Wars and just use the templates in the D six set. That's never my gig. I okay. know you guys do that, but I'm I'm all about that background. I'm I, know, I get that. you. I guess why this is what I'm settling on. Yeah, now, I know. I'm definitely, no, I didn't think you're settling on it. I'm definitely going to pitch Star Wars because if you like the old school West End game D six system, it's easy. Uh, the star. The, what I'm holding here is the uh, second edition second revised with the, and expanded. With the Falcon on it, yeah. This is a fantastic book for learning a game. It's out of print, but mm-hmm. I think there's some copies you can find online of people who have taken the PDF of this and reprinted it on Lulu. And also, uh, Fantasy Flight, last year or the year before, they put it back out, released an anniversary edition of the first edition mm-hmm. of it so they it was like a 20th anniversary or something of the star wars role-playing game and i think they've updated everything to yeah. the new rules that would but, be cool yeah but but kept the flavor of that d6 system it's got the force river it's got han solo Mal. Mal. i mean it's got it's got the standard Jane, space western yeah. you, you guys have it wrong mal is in han solo i know but <sighs> jane is han solo <sighs> jane's like chewbacca and Han Solo mixed together. Jane is like <laughs> Chewbacca and Boba Fett put together in some cases. Side note, if you haven't seen Solo, it's on Netflix right now. You should watch it and turn on the <laughs> audio description. I did that once you said that. Jesus Christ. It's awesome. Yeah. Because there are parts of it where the narrator of the audio description also narrates what the aliens are saying, which you can't normally hear. And mm. there's no subtitles for it. And it's pretty good. Yeah. The conversation between Solo and Chewbacca when they first meet, I was in stitches. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've seen this before. Mm-hmm. We've seen We're both of these talk before. About another one. It's out of print. Yep. Can't get it online. I was just online today talking about how much I missed it. I'm going to give it a quick shout out. Alternity. This was TSR's last role playing game. I see that at uh, Guardian in the used bin constantly for like yeah. five or ten bucks. I see it at Goodwill all the time. I just need to grab one. So I'm mentioning it as a, as a note here. I could run Firefly and Alternity. Okay. Because I know Alternity upside down and backwards. Most people probably couldn't because Alternity is a crunchy system and they play it because they like crunch. I like crunch, but there's ways to streamline the crunch. So, dear listener, if you like Alternity and you think you can streamline it, give it a shot. It's not what I would do. This one I was really intrigued by last time. Yeah, same here. When I was trying to figure out what game that I would ultimately run for this, it was a tough choice Mm -hmm. uh, because they're, well, I love Stars Without Number. I've talked about it before. It is a wagon train to the stars game running old school D&D rules, like Holmes era D&D rules. Stats from 3 to 18, your Mm -hmm. highest bonus is a plus two and only if you have an 18 kind of thing yeah uh, it's got psychics in it that can kick ass but they're rare it's um i'm not going to go too much into detail but what did we use that, that number for? what um, what did we use that for was that uh uh fifth element oh no we no used no it was more no, no we, but we it brought was it up recent. this hasn't won one yet no, we talked in. We were fairly in depth about it too during that. Anyway, session. go back. I, and, I'm pretty yeah. sure I brought this up. It for gives aliens. you an excuse. To, oh, yeah. aliens! Yeah. To, yes. to read our back catalog. Yeah. Yes, Let's do our back catalog. It again. It's old school. There are only four classes: warrior, expert, psychic, and then there's an adventurer. And an adventurer class, you get to pick one aspect of any two classes and then combine them together. It's a cool, simple system. If you're familiar with how our D20 rolls, and if you've played. Dungeons and Dragons. It is D and D in space with a more hard sci-fi bent to it. It has starship rules. It has trade rules in one of the expansions. This could work. This is what I might run if I was playing for a group that liked old school gaming. I love this game. I'm currently running a game of it now. Stars Without Number by Kevin Crawford. It's a great game. It's also well written, and Kevin Crawford is a fucking cool dude. Right on. But the games. Ba-ba-ba-bum. Plural. I don't want to talk about most here. <laughs> uh, there's a little bit of history behind them. First off, these are the official Firefly and Serenity role playing games from Margaret Weiss Productions. As they, in Margaret Weiss, yep. Tracy Hickman? Yes. Wow. Okay. 
What you're holding in your hand there, Dusty, is Serenity, which was the first game that Margaret Weiss Productions put out. Yep, 2005. I actually brought a book this time. (laughs) That is uh, the debut of their house system, which they call the Cortex system, based on the Firefly Cortex. Cortex. They have called all of their subsequent games the Cortex system. Well, they had an adventure system that was, they did Marvel Heroic, I think, which was different. But this, uh, what I'm holding in my hand, is Firefly. The actual Firefly game released much more recently. A much more beautiful book. and uh, That one's uses, pretty beautiful, it too. It uses an advanced, yeah. much updated version of Cortex. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, on a, on a you know, technical licensing side, did, did Weiss Games have to give up the licensing so that <laughs> one it could? So here's how it works. They, when they first published. Honestly, I think the first one is actually just picking it up. It, it, the interior looks better. This is a much bigger book Mm -hmm. i actually prefer the firefly game we'll talk anyway hold on so the serenity role-playing game was their first licensed product and it they got the license for the movie and nothing but Mm -hmm. they could not reference the show wow bring up any notes about the show any characters from the show it was a very limited license that's why the role-playing game is called serenity because it's about the movie gotcha Later, they acquired the license for Firefly as well. And this they made the Firefly role playing game. Now, I've played both. I actually think that you should get both if you can. Agreed. Because the Serenity game, I think, is a subpar system. I had issues with playing it. I did too. I thought it was limited, and I thought that there was uh, a greater chance of critical failure with everything you did you know why i bought it the maps of all all the ship maps which i have just opened up right here this is why you want the serenity book because it has something the firefly book does not which is ship maps and it has a lot just she has a lot more detail it has a lot of example ships in here that with a very 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 slight level of tweaking that you can find rules on how to do in the book in the Firefly book, you can convert all of this directly to that. That's what I ended up doing when nice. I when I played yeah. it because this this is a beautiful book Serenity. and it's it's got a yeah. lot of really great uh, content in it. But it is it's it's hard it's hard to play. I I struggled with it. I I remember my first time playing the Serenity role playing mm. game. I played a, a character who was basically a a Russian mobster version of Jane. Okay. He was less uh shooty and more beady and but he's also smart. I made him smart. He was kind of a he had a, a hidden intelligence and the character was impossible to play in the system because it it really limited your options. And I felt that even the things that I was good at, I was failing at because I didn't laser focus on being a one track pony. Also the character archetypes in Serenity are broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't agree with them. Well, the, 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 yeah. the thing is, that you, this, that, is a, but... this is a rough draft for that company. And yeah. that's the, the final yeah. product. Firefly, the role playing game yeah. feels like a decade of play testing of Serenity. Which is yeah. not far off. <laughs> now, Firefly uses what they call the Cortex Plus system, whereas Serenity's version Cortex has been retroactively renamed Cortex Classic. They had a number of other games in that system as well. When did that come out? Uh, this came out. It looks like 2015. 2014. Oh, yeah, I was it close. was a decade of yeah. playtesting. This yeah. is 2004. 2004. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I want to make a note here about why the Firefly game is amazing and uh, specifically this book the first off the first 143 pages of this book go beat by beat through every episode of the series and break down each moment into gameable mechanics oh nice these are the dice that were rolled in that moment they guide you oh but, that's awesome but they're written as if you were a game master guiding players through those scenes it's how you get the feel of i that. like that yeah. i like that a lot i didn't know that that this system did that or this weiss's company did this with firefly that's really kind of kind of awesome let's find 
a good one. War Stories, one that we talked about earlier. It has a uh, Adelaide Niskai. Mr. Adelaide Niskai is a wealthy crime boss with a passel of scary-looking henchmen at D10, a torturer, and a fortified skyplex to call his own. Paragraphs, 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 talking about his background and his influence, uh, talking about setting up the uh, the ambush, uh, talking stats on the counselor. Yeah. Like it's uh, then it goes down, breaks down each scene mm-hmm. into what dice were rolled and what they think the outcomes were in those. And moments. that's why they took yeah. 10 years to play test everything. Yeah. yeah. So this game updates the Cortex system and even creates, gives you character sheets for all of the main characters of Firefly. And character sheets for all the main ships of Firefly. Correct. Uh, well, it has a ship building system of how mm-hmm. you can, how it shows you a ship building system. And then it's like, now let's build Serenity with that system. We're going to take this model. We're going to apply this and we're going to do it in these ways. It's really fucking cool. Right on. When you get together to make characters, the first option that it presents you is just play the Firefly characters. Here yeah. Are their stats. Well, okay. I don't really want to play the Firefly characters. We want to, but we would do want to. I've always some... wanted to play his big bearded friend, the other trader, who he meets Mrs. Reynolds from, who used to be <laughs> his wife. <laughs> I've always wanted to play him. Yeah. Well, then it goes into and he's in there. if you don't want to play the Firefly characters, here's how to build characters based on pre-built templates. Dusty, you're familiar with West End Game Star Wars. It's yes. the same thing. Mm-hmm. Take a template. We'll guide you through one page of how to tweak that template and go play. It's got like three dozen character templates from the core, the rim, and, and then the, the fringe. Hub. Yeah. Yeah. And the border planets. Yeah, Sorry. border planets. But then it goes it a step further. You don't like any of these? Here's how to do it step by step from scratch. That's good. This system wowed me i was not expecting to like this having had a bad experience with serenity Mm -hmm. but it does a lot of things with uh improving the way that dice are rolled and giving you a chance to add more dice based upon coming up with things like uh you know jane can add a special die simply because he's got vera and vera is a named asset kind of thing and it's his signature uh stuff like that it's his all-time favorite gun the basic mechanics essentially are you have a stat, you have a skill, each one is a die, roll them. This is one of the ones where I, I agree with you 100%. I'm going to agree, it's too. It's not often that I can't think of something else that would do it just a little better than something that's branded after it, but you're entirely correct. Firefly for Firefly is what Firefly. you want to do. Is what yeah. you should play, yes. I One thing I do like about the mechanics is the way that you can spin plot points, kind of like fate points or whatever. You can spin plot points, and there's a complexity to it, but basically the short and skinny of it is the GM spins a plot point to make a thing happen for the bad guys, and in doing so gives the players a plot point. The players can spin a plot point to make a thing happen cool for the character. That gives one back to the yeah. GM. There's a little bit more to it than that, but that's the real quick version. Players can get extra dice, but you always roll as many dice as you feel that you can game, but you only add the highest two together. And I really like that too. So yeah. it's not like, I'm going to roll eight dice. Shit, math. Yeah. And you can do this kind of bidding war, where uh, when the defender rolls the dice first. Mm-hmm. So the defender, as they call it, setting the stakes. So the defender picks their dice pool, rolls it, decides if they want to spin a fate point, and then they do it. Then the attacker or the aggressor or the person who is challenging them, then they get to do it. But the defender has to decide whether or not they want to set their, their stakes higher before the attacker rolls. So if you have some abilities, it favors the person who is actually taking action. So it encourages players to be uh, proactive. So when a player is like, I'm going to shoot that guy, the Mal walking up the steps at the the ramp yeah. at the back, I'm going to just shoot that guy. Well, the GM's like, shit, well, okay, I'm going to roll this it, it's, situation. It's not a D&D where it's, yeah. yeah. And then the players, Mal's player at the end of the session is like, no, I really want to shoot that guy. Are you done rolling, GM? Are you done? Are you done? You got everything? Here you go. Cool. Plot point. Big damn hero point. I'm going to bring in this gun and I'm a fucking asshole. He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really good. Done. I like it. I like agree this. Yeah, I, I agree. So for all of that, Firefly with Firefly. Firefly. Mm-hmm. That's what For we got. Firefly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. We got any other business we want to let them know? Yeah. Well, once again, folks, we have a Patreon set up, and we actually recorded some bonus content for it tonight. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add some additional listening to three bros on the microphone talk about Firefly. We got to stop doing that. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, no, yeah. no, we don't. Yeah. No, we don't need to stop. Come, we have, <laughs> we have Discord. We have Facebook. We have all those other wonderful places that you can. Going to be doing us. a little more Instagram here soon. Yep, yep. Uh, getting uh, more uh, on the Twitterverse. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I guess that's it, guys. All right. I can't really think of anything. We wrapped this one up quite nicely. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks everyone for listening. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, as always, I'm Matthew, and I'm Dusty, and I'm Nathaniel. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're still pretty new to the scene, and we'd love to get your feedback. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on iTunes with your thoughts. Good or bad, they really help us get the word out. If you want to say hello, drop us a line on all of the usual social media sites. You can find the links right there in the show notes. You can also leave us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Have Movies Will Game is a Breakfast Puppies podcast production, and our episodes are distributed under CC BYND 4.0 license. Our opening theme is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, with introductory narration provided by Isaac Scher. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>